This is a video of uh, finding horizontal asymptotes of a rational function and finding the x and y intercepts of a rational function for Friday, October 21st. Uh, the plan <coughs> for today is to complete tw pages 12 through 15. If I don't get through that, or those, or if we don't get through those in the video, then finish those, pa those pages and then uh, look at or finish the week eight homework posted on Canvas. That's going to be due Sunday evening. Here is page 12. I already uh, posted the graphs here. I used Desmos and then I cut and pasted them in there. So it's uh, find the horizontal asymptote by sketching the graph. Here's a sketch of the graph. And here's a statement when the numerator's highest exponent is less than the denominator's highest exponent, then there is a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So I'm going to insert a zero here. Let me make it blue. All right, so the range then would be all reals except y equals zero. And then the second function, this actually has a slant asymptote. We'll talk about that at a later date. But when the Numerator's highest exponent is greater than the denominator's highest exponent. There is no horizontal asymptote. And notice that this has a vertical asymptote. So I'm going to go ahead and write that in because we talked about that yesterday. So the vertical asymptote for this one is x equal 3. And the vertical asymptote for this one is x equals 0. And I'm going to go ahead and write the horizontal asymptote or the slant asymptote for this one, although we didn't talk about that yet. Is y equal x. So because this has a slant asymptote, the range is a little bit different there. It's going to be all reals except where y is equal to x. And then this last one here has a vertical and a horizontal asymptote. When the numerator's highest exponent is the same as the denominator's highest exponent, then the horizontal asymptote is the leading coefficient. of the numerator and over, so I'm going to underline that, the leading coefficient of the denominator. So in this case, it's 3 over 2. So 
So the range would be all reals except for three halves. All right. So if we wanted to find the uh, vertical asymptote here, remember that we would have to factor this numerator and denominator. So f of x equals, so the only factors of three are three and one. Then you wanna combine that, multiply and combine that with a four to get an eight. So, and both would have to be negative. So if I put a negative two in here, that's negative six X and another negative two. So that'll be three X squared minus six X minus two X is negative eight X and negative two times negative two is positive four. If I factor the denominator, it's two X and x and I want to get a negative three so I'm gonna put a minus two here and a positive one here so remember that uh, the vertical asymptote there is going to be x equal negative one half and uh, x equal oh, x equal negative one half because this cancels. So so let me put that in there. So if I look at this from yesterday, finding the hole in the vertical asymptote, so this cancels here. So my vertical asymptote, I'm running out of room here, but is x equal negative one half and there's actually going to be a hole at two. So if I plug a two in for X, three times two is six, minus two is four in the numerator. And then in the denominator would be two times two is four plus one is five. So that would be four fifths is a whole two and four fifths. The X value is two and the Y value is four fifths. All right, you could have uh, the instructor stop the video here. If you need to copy down the information on this slide. All right.
the next slide gives you the rules for horizontal asymptotes and I passed out a note sheet yesterday that goes with this blue packet. Uh, the same things are probably written on that note sheet. So you want to locate the highest exponents in the numerator and the denominator and compare them. If the highest exponent in the numerator is in the numerator, there's no horizontal asymptote. So in other words, the exponent in the numerator is greater than the denominator, no horizontal asymptote. If uh, the exponent in the denominator is higher, there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So the first case, we call that top heavy. So if I plugged in for x, the number up here would be greater than the number down there. So there's no, no horizontal asymptote. And the second statement there is bottom heavy. So y equals zero is horizontal asymptote. So here we're comparing these two exponents. Very small there. Looks like a, a three and a five. Five is greater here. When they're equal, it's balanced, or we do the leading coefficient, negative one over three. So this box says the same thing in a different way. So if the numerator uh, exponent is less than the denominator, then the x-axis is the horizontal asymptote. That's y equals zero, so that matches up with c. If they're equal, these two match each other. a over b, those are the leading coefficients. And if um, the numerator exponent is greater than the denominator exponent, that's this case here, case a matches with three, then there's no horizontal asymptote. So in these, I'm just going to write top heavy balanced or bottom heavy. And then instead of writing all this out, the numerator exponent is less than the denominator exponent and so on. So I'm just going to abbreviate this one as balanced here. Instead of writing all this out in the second box, I'm just going to use the first box here as top heavy, balanced, or bottom heavy, and then found the horizontal asymptote. So for the first one here, both the exponents are 1, so the horizontal asymptote is 2 over 1 or y equal 2. And the range then would be all reals except y equal 2. I want to look here. This would be a x squared if I multiply this together, 2x squared and the x. So this one is bottom heavy here. So y equals 0. Y equals zero, and then the range would be all reals except y equals zero. This one's top heavy. So oh, there's no horizontal asymptote. The all real numbers here. And then this has an x squared and this has an x in it. So top heavy again. And then this one, bottom heavy.
So the range would be all reals except y equals zero. Slide this up a little bit. And this one is both x to the first. So this is balanced here. And then y equal negative 4 over 2. Which is y equal negative 2. So the range is all real numbers except y equal 2. Or negative 2, sorry. All right, the instructor can pause the video there. They can copy those down. All right, page 14. Practice finding the horizontal asymptote of each function and writing the range. So these are, this is balanced. Uh, y equal 1. Up heavy. This one's balanced. Michael one. And then this would be all reals, except I go one, four is balanced. I go five. Number five is balanced. You have, so you want to put this into descending order. So the highest exponent there is a two. 
So you're looking at the leading coefficient of the x squareds here, three and two. So y equal three halves, all reals, except y equal three halves. So eventually I'm gonna have you put this all together. There's also vertical asymptotes for all of these here. So, but because we're only concentrating on horizontal today, I'm just gonna write the horizontal asymptotes. And this one is bottom heavy. I go zero. All right, to, so finding intercepts of any function, to find the x-intercepts, you let y equal zero and then solve for x. And then you're gonna write the order pair some x value and zero, or x is some number. I'm just gonna make the pound symbol there. And to find the y-intercept, set x equals zero, all the x's, solve for y, and then the y-intercept is either gonna be written as the point, zero y, or y equals some number here. So the example is 2x minus 2. If I let y equal 0 and then solve for x, x is 1, or the point 1, 0. And then setting x equal to 0, 2 times 0 minus 2 is negative 2, so y is negative 2, or the point 0, negative 2. And this graph right here, x-intercept uh, 1, 0 y-intercept 0, negative 2. And here's a color-coded graph here. So where the blue graph intercepts the y-axis, that's called the y-intercept. Where the blue graph intercepts the x-axis, that's called the x-intercept. So the example here, find the x-intercept. So when you have a rational function, you can just ignore the denominator because if I multiply through by the denominator, I still have zero on the left. So zero equal x plus two. So x is equal to negative two. Or if I wrote it as an ordered pair, negative two, zero. y-intercept, I'm plugging in a zero everywhere for x, so y, let me use the equation I earlier this time. So y equals, and then the fraction here, zero plus two, over zero plus one times zero minus one. So when I do the math there, it's two over negative one. Two over negative one. Y equal negative two. Or I could write it the ordered pair. 
zero, negative two. Horizontal asymptote, bottom heavy, y equals zero. So if I plug in a zero, I would have zero equal three divided by x squared, which doesn't make any sense. There's no nothing I can plug in here to have three divided by something is equal to zero. So there's no x intercept. And I can't divide by zero, so there's no y intercept. So if I did y equal three divided by zero squared, I can't divide by zero. No y intercept. This is bottom heavy. So y equals zero. Next one, zero equal x minus three squared. So x is equal to three. Three, zero. And then if I plug in a zero for x, so y equal um, Zero, let me get the square here. Zero minus three, that squared. And then the bottom is zero squared. Minus nine. So y equal nine over negative nine. So y equal negative one. So zero, negative one. And this is balanced. Y equal one. That's one. 
zero equal x squared minus x minus x, whoops, let me get the cursor in the right place here, minus x. Minus x, minus two. If I factor that, x minus two times x plus one. So I have two x intercepts to zero. And negative one zero. And then the y intercepts. is f of x so zero squared minus zero minus two over zero minus three, a y equal two thirds. Zero and then this is top heavy. So no horizontal asymptote. That's it for today, pages 12 to 15. Hopefully you got through it all. If not, I'll post this on the Canvas page.